Hey, hello and welcome. In this tutorial, we are going to take a look at a simple and scalable way to implement a leader board in your Godot game. We are also going to discuss some cool features of it and some things you have to be aware of, which I encountered while implementing this feature for a remake of my first ever game. If you missed a video about it and interested in some longer devlog format, I recommend to check it out. But let's get to the subject of our talk. Global leaderboards is not the easiest thing to approach, since in addition to your game it requires a backend solution that's going to store all the information about scores and with your client, i.e. scoreboard in your game, with this data. This solution also has to be hosted on some sort of a server that is expected to work 24-7. All of those are problems that you, as a single player game developer, would not encounter too often, so let's discuss our options. And in fact, there's just a few of them. You either write your own backend or use a ready to deploy solution. You either buy your own server and self host or go to a hosting that provides the best service for your backend and host there. That's it. Basically, you get more control over your service if you do some of it on your own but you have to spend that much more time. On the other end of the spectrum, third parties will take a lot of responsibilities from you, letting you work on what's actually important. And of course, sometimes the third parties might ask payment for their services. This principle in general applies to all types of backends and not only hosting of leaderboards. Since we don't really need much control over our leaderboards and we want to make games and not implement our own leaderboards from scratch, Today, we're going to talk about Silent Wolf. This service will provide you with all the code necessary to interact with backend, host your leaderboard on their service, and do a lot of other things. It's also free and easy to use. But if you're interested in a bit more control over your back, in the description you can find a link to a great video by Mr. Elliptic, in which they discuss other solutions that you can use for leaderboards with general pros and cons for each of these solutions. Now getting back to the Silent Wolf. To start with it, you first have to register or log in on their site and add a game in your profile. After you add the game, there will be your API key and game ID, which is basically the same as the name of the game, but granted to be unique. There are ways to get this information later, but I would recommend that you copy API key and game ID at this point to not lose them. We need both of them to work with the leaderboard. Next, you go to leaderboard's page and download the Little Wolf plugin for Godot. In this part of the video, I'm going to tell the information that's presented on this page. If you already know all of it, or want to read by yourself and want to skip to something more interesting, time code should have already popped up on your screen. After you download the plugin, you have to unpack it into add-ons folder inside of your project. Go to editor and add Silent Wolf GD to afterload with global variables previously known as singleton, enable, and somewhere in your project call a configure function of this add-on. It's important to make sure that this function gets called before any interaction with the leaderboard, so underscore ready of another global script or your opening scene would be a perfect place for it. We also have to supply some parameters to this function. There you'll need your API key and game ID. Supplying some game version would make sense too. Game versions are simply a way to separate leaderboards for obviously different versions of your game. Like, if you did some balance breaking mechanic or something, you can move new scores into a separate leaderboard, and players of previous versions would live on their leaderboard, and new version players would live in theirs, without having an unfair advantage on each other. Last parameter of this function is log level, and you can leave it at 1 or even ramp up to 2 while you're setting up your leaderboard. 1 is info logs and 2 is debug logs. But for security reasons, you must set it to 0 before releasing the game. More on that later and never leave debug mode on anyways when you exploit on your game, both for security and optimization reasons. Now on the subject of basic operations with leaderboard. And in fact, all you need is two of them. Add a new score and see list of the scores. All the rest are mostly for moderation purposes and you can do moderation on Silence Wolf website. So the simple way to upload a score looks like this. And a bit more complex one, like this. First one just upload score and that's it. Second return score ID that will be used in the next step. Which is showing you leaderboard. There are two ways to approach it. First one is to show the high score. Here is the code for it. Parameter of this function defines how many elements you want to get and zero means that you want all. 
In this case, you might want to know the position of the coin which is submitted to focus the bot on it. Here's how to get it. Either by supplying the score itself or the score ID. And the second option is to show scores around the one we are interested in. Call for that is very similar to the one for getting the position, but this time there is a second parameter which defines how many scores you want to get. Using this function, you will also get a position for every score in your list. All the functions I've shown also have one more optional parameter, which lets you define which bot you want to submit to. Yes, a game can have multiple bots, and all you need to do to use them is to set this parameter. If you want to edit this bot through dashboard on Silent Wolf's site, you have to add your bot through site too though. That's it about the basics of working with this service. Now let's get into something a bit more complicated. I mean, fun. While in simple cases, leaderboard score and game score are the same thing, isn't always the case. Like in my game Happy Hippo, where I have to store both the game score and amount of coins collected in the run. Silent Wolf doesn't really allow you to have multiple columns in one bot yet. They are still working on this feature. But in the meantime, here's a workaround that lets you store additional information on your leaderboard, which might be helpful for you. If you just want to store something, but it doesn't affect positioning in the bot, here's a metadata parameter that you can specify while sending the score and attach anything you want to it. If you actually want to have multiple columns in your leaderboard and sort scores by more than one of them, here's what you can do. First, create a map for metadata and add all your fields into it. Second, create a function which converts all the fields you want to sort on into one number that will define order of positions on the bot. Submit this number instead of a score parameter. Now your position scores in a way you want and can easily show your players info about their runs by extracting it from metadata instead of using leaderboard scores. There are a few limitations though. First is that as far as I'm aware, score is a 64-bit long floating point number. Keep that in mind and don't get out of the 64 bits, otherwise it won't even send your score. And second is that these two numbers will be the same when they get to the server. Don't forget that all the zeros at the front and the end of the number are seen as a non-informative and will be removed in conversions, while in fact they might matter a lot in your case. So build your score function in such a way as that important zeros would stay, like adding a symbol to the end or something. With this trick you can do almost anything you want with your little bots, but with all the good stuff said, I have to also mention some problems that you have to be aware of and that also of Silent Wolf is working on fixing. They are tied to how API keys work. I haven't mentioned a few functions that are available to you. Those are for removing elements from the leaderboard and wiping it entirely. Obviously, you don't want some adversary to use these functions. And since the API key is for your whole account, getting it from any source gives somebody full access to leaderboards of all of your games. And what would stop them from doing that? Your API key is included into every copy of your game, because you need the same key to be able to show the bot. So, there's always the way to get it. But, we can at least disable easy ones. And the easiest way to get your key would be through debug logs, if you lose them. That's why you have to always turn debug off when exporting and also set logs to zero. With the setting, it won't show your key every time the score is submitted. There are still ways of extracting it straight from your game files or through decrypting HTTPS connection, but those are much harder and require adversary to be quite committed. Nobody is going to do that to you if your game is not a really big hit. If it is, you might want to get back to my explanation of other ways of implementing your little bot and choose one that fits you better. So, all in all, it's not a serious issue, but still one that you better be aware of. Soon this will be fixed, as I've said, they're already working on it. All in all, Silent Wolf is a great backend solution for your leaderboards and other needs, which you can set up in just a few minutes. If you want to add leaderboard to a game, I would highly recommend it. With that being said, I think that's it for today. I hope that this video would help you implement leaderboards in your games without any hiccups. I also really want to know your opinion on it. So, leave comments down below, consider subscribing and ring the bell to not miss the next video. But, for now, here's a few other videos you can check. Thanks for watching, stay safe, have a good day, and bye!